you know, I think that y'all can do better than that. These poets have competed since January to come and get free on this stage in front of you tonight. So if you're ready for Team Poetry Slam Finals, make some noise! There we go, there we go, there we go. What's up, everybody? My name is Darius, BKA Halle Berry Dairy. And I'm excited to be your host and MC tonight. I'm your MC tonight, sorry, not host. But before we jump into the slam, we have a very special treat for y'all. Say special treat. Special treat. We got somebody kicking off our Team Poetry Slam finals, an amazing vocalist, singer, writer, dancer, performer, and gymnast. <laughs> Make some noise for Bianca Brown! Friday night going? Good. Well, I was uh, asked to be here in front of you today to perform a song, but I couldn't pick my song, so I decided to do a medley of four different ones, if that's all right. All right? So, some of these songs might be new to you. A lot of them, or all of them, might just be familiar, um, but the songs are This Little Light of Mine. Um, the Light by Common, uh, Rise Up by Andre Day, and Ooh Child by, ooh, by who? Y'all know who? But y'all know what song I'm talking about, so it doesn't matter. All right, so here we go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. There are times when you need someone, I will be by your side. Snap with me. There is a light that shines special for you and me. There are times when you need someone, I will be by your side. Mm -hmm. There is a light, light that shines special for you and me and i'll rise up i'll rise like the day i'll rise up i'll rise unafraid i'll rise up and i'll do it a thousand times again mm, again and I'll rise up high like the waves. I'll rise up in spite of the ache. I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. Mm -hmm. Sing along if you know the words. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, things will get brighter. Someday, 
We'll put it together and we'll get it undone. Someday when your head is much lighter. Someday we'll walk in the rays of a beautiful sun. Someday when the world is much brighter. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, things will get brighter. Cause things will be just as they are. So with this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Y'all better give it up for Bianca Brown! Ooh, that girl can sing! Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. Uh, make sure y'all come in, grab y'all seats, grab y'all seats. I'm gonna ask y'all again, are y'all ready for the Team Poetry Slam Finals? Make some noise! There we go, there we go. It sounds like y'all are kinda ready, kinda ready. Um, again, my name is Darius Park. I'll be your MC for tonight. Um, shout out to all the poets in the room, the artists, organizers, educators, parents, friends, SF, Oakland, school staff, educators. Make some noise for yourselves. <laughs> shout out to my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing host, Gretchen, who y'all gonna meet in just a moment. Shout out to DJ Ignacio, it's gonna keep us on the tunes. Front of house staff, production squad, spokes, everybody. Shout out to the Atrium Theater for hosting us tonight. Um, so before we jump into the things, I have a few um, housekeeping specifics I got to get through. Is that cool with y'all? Say cool. Is that cool with y'all? Say cool. Cool. What's up, Nick James? Give it up for Nick James. <laughs> so we have a land acknowledgement here from the San Francisco Arts Commission. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Rametush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. As guests, we recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community and by affirming their sovereign rights as First Peoples. Clap it up. We're going to say this land does not belong to us. It belongs to our ancestors who've been here before. Um, I have one more statement for black labor. We also acknowledge that stolen labor is at the foundation of this nation and its vast and inequitable wealth. We recognize the power, resilience, and resistance of all enslaved African people whose labor built a nation that refused to recognize them as human. We recognize that our economy continues to rely on the exploited labor of incarcerated people. We acknowledge the debt owed, but beyond acknowledgement, we mourn the lives exploited and lives lost. Beyond our mourning, we commit to fight and resist white supremacy wherever it appears. Make some noise. So as I said at the beginning, we're here for the Team Poetry Slam Finals. 50 poets, 50 young people have blessed our stages across San Francisco and Oakland who are coming here tonight to compete for the top six slots to represent the Bay Area at the International Youth Poetry Slam Festival, Brave New Voices. This year, the festival will be in Washington, D.C., so poets from around the world will come together to compete in Slam. And we all know the crowd gonna come to the Bay, right? The crowd gonna come to the Bay, right? All right, all right. So before we get into that, I want to kick it over to, like I said, my amazing host, Gretch, who's going to introduce us to our judges for tonight. Gretchen, what's up? The lady Hi. in red. Give it up for Gretchen, y'all. What's tea? What's tea? Hello. Before I introduce you to these beautiful judges, how many of y'all have been to a slam? Raise your hand. Okay. And then how many of y'all have never been to a poetry slam? Raise your hand. Make some noise to the newcomers. Hello. Hello. I'm going to introduce y'all to what a poetry slam is. Now, a poetry slam is a competitive poetry event. We're here to provide a platform to celebrate some of the most incredible and urgent young voices in the Bay Area. Okay. Say okay. Period. We have five judges that will score the poems from a scale of one to ten. Low to high scores will be dropped, and three of the middle will three of the middle of 
at, scores will be added together to have a max total of 30 points. This is silent scoring. If you've been to a poetry slam before and you were able to boo the judges, we love that, but not here. Okay, per. This is a silent scoring event, which means that the judges, the only people that'll be viewing the, the scores is at this table. Oh, curse, I mind your business. And the way that you want to show your love is by making so much noise and showing so much love to the poets. Word? Period. So again, make maximum noise. Control this crowd how you want to, you feel me? And show love to the poets. That's the most important part. Our Grand Slam champion tonight wins a cash prize and the top six scoring poets from finals are gonna be on the spot, on the team to represent Brave New Voices in Washington, D.C. this summer. Make some noise for BMV. <laughs> and it's an election year, y'all. You know we about to rock the White House, you feel me? Are y'all ready to meet the judges? Say, hey, judges! Over here, we have Tanish Hollins, Executive Director of Californians for Safety and Justice, co-founder of the San Francisco Black Wall Street. And where's she at from? She from the city, she from right here, 415, make some noise, come on. And we asked all of the judges, what happens when you use your voice? Tanish said, when I use my voice, shit changes. I know that's right. <laughs> Reforming the criminal justice system to end criminalization of black and brown and all marginalized people and run power back to our people. Make some noise for Tanish. We have Tamisha Wallace say, hey, Tamisha. Executive Director of Youth Empowerment for the Commission of California, and you rep at what? East Oakland is in the building, y'all. What happens when Tamisha uses her voice? Energy shifts, conversations start, and connections are made. Make some noise for Tamisha, period. In the middle seat, we have Issa Nakazawa. Issa Nakazawa is, wow, a powerhouse, a Oh my gosh, if y'all haven't checked out her uh, podcast yet on Spotify called Stars and Stars, she'd be reading astrological charts of celebs, y'all. If you wanna know the tea on some of these stars on a celestial tip, peep Stars and Stars, period. She rep in Oakland, and what happens when she uses her voice? Paradigm shift, baby, make some noise. We have Hadil Ramadan. Hadil Ramadan is like a literal celeb. If you don't know Hadil's poems, you speaks Brave New Voices OG, and she's repping where? Palestine. I know that's right. Exactly. And what happens when Hadil uses their voice? Y'all better watch out and take cover because the ground moves, period. Make some noise for Hadil. I want y'all to show special love because we always love to have a youth judge, and we have one youth judge who is but 13 years old. Make some noise for Kavi. Period. Kavi reps. Kavi reps India and Nicaragua. I know that's right. What happens when Kavi uses his voice? It echoes through the walls. Make some noise, y'all! And these are our wonderful judges. And again, 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 I cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. The, the government just banned three states from the right to protest. So please, every kid that gets up on this mic is an individual protest of their own right. You feel me? We are here to celebrate these young people. We are here to celebrate the fact that they have the opportunity to get free on a stage and people are willing to listen. So please show love, maximum love, whether that's during the poem, whether that's after the poem, you want to dap them up. But please, y'all, for real, this is the time to be showing our young people that they can move these these policies move, these politicians move the world. You feel me? So make some noise. I'm going to turn it back to my beautiful MC, Derry. Uh, thank you, Gretchen. Shout out to the judges. All right, y'all. So, again, as Gretchen said, we're here to celebrate our young people. So y'all know what that means? That means that y'all can't be in this audience quiet, okay? As much as I love ASMR, as much as I love it, this is our Team Poetry Slam final. So I need y'all to bring the thunder. Can y'all stop y'all feet for me real quick? Bring the thunder, bring the thunder. All right, so if a poet says something that moves you, a poet says something that makes you want to say, oh, yes, I love what that poet is saying. Give me some snaps. Can I have some snaps? Cool, cool, cool. If a poet says something that just blows your mind, I want you to snap and say, mmm. Let me see a snap and a mmm. If a poet says something that's like absolutely phenomenal, you can snap mm, and say, let's go, poet. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let's go, poet. So how many things are we do? Let me see your snaps. Let me hear your snaps. Let me hear mm. Let me hear stomps. Bring the thunder and let me hear some let's go, poets. 
or I see you, poet, or go in, poet, or you know what? I love you, poet. Absolutely. Can you make some noise for yourselves one more time? So before we jump into the slam, um, I got to talk about the content and trigger warnings, right? We acknowledge the words of our young folks are powerful. Poets are going to get on this mic today and speak their truth. This may include topics that might physically or emotionally activate folks in the audience and may cause them to relive traumatic events in their minds and bodies. So this is a collective content and trigger warning. Please do what you need to do in order to take care of your mental and emotional health during this show. We also support, we have our support stations run by our Spokes Youth Advisory Board. Spokes! Run in the back, in the, um, back in the atrium theater to your left. So we will not take it as disrespect if you have to leave the space to take care of yourself. Is that cool? Additionally, while these young people are up here getting free, I don't want to hear no cell phones. All right, take your cell phones out right now, put them on vibrate and or silent, because the moment I hear a cell phone ring while one of these young poets up on this stage, I'm going to have to see you in the parking lot, okay? Cool. So, um, again, we're so excited to have y'all with us tonight. Um, let me, oh, oh, I heard a sneeze. While we're talking about each other, we're sneezing. That always don't mean COVID, y'all. A sneeze is not always COVID. However, in order for us to be safe, if you want to continue to be safe, please feel free to mask up. Please feel free to cover yourselves up. Go wash your hands. Use your sanitizer, all the things, because we want to make sure that we're safe as well. Is that cool? I, I, I'm not going to look at you funny if you cough or sneeze. I, I may look at you real quick. Like, Take care of that, baby. Take care of that. Take care of that. Are y'all ready for a poetry slam? All right, all right. So again, please show maximum amount of love and support. Can I have all my poets competing tonight? Please stand. Give them a round of applause. We're here for y'all. This is y'all's show. All right? Of these amazing top 10 poets, like I said, six will advance. And the ones who don't advance, that's all good. We love y'all still, because y'all still like you Speaks family, and we continue to get free and build with y'all. Okay, Ignacio. I'm a boss. Period. All right, so um, before we jump into the slam, we have something called a calibration pour. Let me hear you say calibration. Let me hear you say calibration. So this is an opportunity for our judges to get their pens and their experiences together, right? Because, you know, sometimes judges will be like, oh, that was great, 10, <laughs> right? And if you do that, that's fine. But we want our judges to be able to rank and score their poets based on the calibration report that's going to come up to the stage. So I want y'all to give all your love, all of your warmth, all of your energy to our calibration poet. Make some noise for Zoe! The first thing that you should know about me is that I am used to being afraid. The resonance of terror is more familiar than my own skin. Panic lives in the gut, and it is as low and inevitable as a gunshot. All anxieties taste the same like skin, metal, the backs of my teeth. My mind chews itself up, adrenaline and cortisol, and it's been doing that for so long, it's become nearly unremarkable. Another day, another soaring heart rate. Oh, I'm sorry, I fucked up. <laughs> uh, My mind chews itself up adrenaline and cortisol, and it's been doing that for so long, it's become nearly unremarkable. That gasping dread, that moment of blank terror, I breathe deep, and they sink down into my chest like a smothering. It's easy. There is always something new to catastrophize, or if nothing is new, then there is always fire, the color of the horizon, the breaking of my bones. I've been told I don't look anxious. Some calm exterior slots overhead to cover me. Panic is messy, 
and tiring, and I wonder if whatever controls my face has just stopped caring. Another day, another soaring heart rate, fear is all muscle prickling over my spine, lungs calcifying into scar tissue, running out of space. No breath, blank face, and internal collapse shoved to the side but still emitting gravity. I don't have time for fear, but that doesn't mean I can purge the taste of it from my mouth. Panic lives in the guts, sours into dread, wakes me up at night thinking I've forgotten something inevitable because I can't imagine life without it. Sometimes I think I was made to be scared. I am very good at finding flaws, and when you can't stop yourself from noticing what's wrong, fear is just a natural side effect. Sometimes I think the world was made to be terrifying. Everything is breakable, everything is a threat even when it's not, and my chest is full of awful possibilities and my head is full of noise. Panic is messy. It is loud and unraveling, and I am just waiting for the gunshot. Y'all give it up for Zoe! Amazing work, amazing work. All right, judges, y'all already know what to do. Get those pins to paper for us. So, I'm gonna bring poets up to the stage for their rounds, right? So I'm gonna do a little call and response for y'all. So when I say, next up on the microphone, I want y'all to say, where they at, where they at, where they at? Is that cool? Next up on the microphone. Y'all not loud enough. Next up on the microphone. Thank you, thank you. On deck, we have Selma. But coming to the mic right now, give it up for Marvin. Amassing births or a massacre, which do you prefer? Must we first confer to discuss the worth of him or her? A ceasefire you won't ensure. Bombings you can't rescind over the child that hasn't sinned. Trapped in rubble from which your sponsor in. And from my pain to my brothers and sisters slain. To my brother who died before birth. To my mother who always placed me first. Will you discuss her worth? Discussed by the same white man who came to say, this man died for you on a cross, resurrected, have faith. What you often don't say is how your God killed culture, practice with his law and order. Labeled savages through sacrifice, but tell me what your highness did. Ordered executions over simple fucking finances. Huh, who the real savage is? Hmm. You erase practice for rain, shower, crop growth, and good fortune. While your king killed for full power, fear, control of your choices. So don't speak to me about your morals. This ain't no quarrel. Don't speak to me like a friend. I want to slaughter the systems you defend. White supremacy, your friend. Jim Crow laws that you mend. Prison soaked red. You don't rehabilitate, but you pretend. You take activism as this recent trend. Like when has the struggle ever met its end? Values that you pretend, like what wounds do you tend? And from Aztec fights to the immigrant plight, my body is one of hardship and divine light. Growing in an era from which my people were made into the issue, a topic to discuss, a political ploy to get us less employed. Send them back or lock them here. Our power is what most you fear. I understand who most you fear, who stands at your heights. Cross hairs on those with the willingness to fight. Yeah, you tell me violence ain't right. So tell me what happened to Fred Hampton that night. A blood-soaked mattress, that's right. What about MLK's plight? His dream you adopt, but you're so eager to drop. Hateful rhetoric you bought. 
Like how do you speak down on the woman who works the nights, missing time with her child, she paid the price, yet you spit the same rhetoric out of spite, like her work ethic won't suffice. So show me the statistics that you're right, explain to me her vice, show me her crack pipe, you act as if most of your rapists aren't white, you act like I won't fight, this battle of conscious, you'll batter me unconscious like you didn't start shit. You hold the knife that was marked with, my split conscience, I code switch and offense, it's black and brown power with no off switch. And I can already feel the red dot, for my death is sought. What more do you need to understand the enemy is he who leads? All highs and ears, face change every four years. Elect he who least you fear. Am I clear? And there's no doubt in my mind, one day while I'm reciting lines, he'll send agents and they'll come from the rear and ask, what most do you fear? And before I mutter back, I'll feel the blood gushing out my back. Hypocrite. Keep that love going. Keep that love going for that poet. That's what we're doing tonight at Team Poetry Slam Finals. Make some noise one more time. Next up on the microphone. Oh, y'all. That was a test drive, right? So we got it together this time. Cool. Next up on the microphone. Almost. Next up on the microphone. I need some more love. Next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Olivia. But I want you to give all your love to the poet, Selma. The term ethnic cleansing and the word genocide aren't synonyms. But to me, ethnic cleansing is genocide pseudonym because it makes murderers sound like they're just doing maintenance. Except ethnic cleansing is not housekeeping. It directly bleeds into genocide. It only makes sense that an ugly truth would want to hide behind a pretty lie, but I want to bask in genocide's ugliness and I want it to radiate with its own shame because it's better than playing this game of global silence that always ends the same. I'm tired of hearing a nationally broadcasted cover-up story before the truth. And I'm sick of watching repeatedly how they villainize the resistance on the news. It's almost as if they truly believe the oppressed should never fight back because to them, that's a lose-lose. Our country claims to sympathize for the suffering while sending weapons to fuel their suffrage. So they urge us to live ignorantly, to indulge and waste our time so that our moral judgment and their agenda don't intertwine and they can continue to blissfully turn a blind eye to their own crimes. We constantly feed off the spoils of genocide with little conscience because its death and destruction is always off camera. Yet when we watch movies about American history, genocide should be the first name rolling at the start of the credits. While we blindly spectate this world death duet, a little girl sees her little brother's body buried under the rubble of her demolished home. Her sobs should be heard by the whole world because they pointed guns at just a little girl. Genocide hides behind a neutral system because neutrality has always empowered the oppressor and never the victim. Neutral is silent. Regardless, our shouts are too quiet. A shout becomes a whisper when they over-censor us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So let's call out the leaders who hide behind a neutral stance. If they can spend millions to fund both sides of a war, tell them to start paying war reparations in advance. Let's give the people a fighting chance. Please come take your, my place because my, ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Genocide, come step on the world stage. Let your horrors echo in the very depths of our stomachs so we can feel even a fraction of your victim's rage. Genocide, you're fueling vessels filled with hate, so don't be shocked when we pick up the fragments of ruin you caused and turn them into our own bombs. Please come take my place because I'll scream until my throat rubs raw, but my voice alone is not enough to enforce international law. No matter how much poetry I read to you all, some lines that rhyme won't stop genocide. 
So please, turn yourself in and admit to your sins because I can't bring justice to your victims through a poem. Genocide, I hope you realize just how much you owe them. How much you owe the little boys and girls who you are murdering 7,463 miles east of this stage. Our world's acceptance of genocide is long overdue for a change. Show some love to the poet Selma! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free! All right, all right, thank you, thank you so, so much. Get your seats, get your seats. But that's what we're doing tonight at Team Poetry Slam. Make some noise one more time for the poets. All right, we're gonna keep this thing rocking and rolling. Next up on the microphone. All right, all right. I'm starting to take it personally because that's the second time y'all looked at me crazy. All right, so I'm going to ask you one more time. <clears throat> Can we cut the music, Ignacia? <clears throat> so I'm going to say it a little bit slowly. Maybe I went too fast, and that's my fault. All right? So I'm going to ask you next up on the microphone, and I would like for you to respond where they at, where they at, where they at. Now, I added a little A-A-V-E to it. Where they at, okay? Where they at, where they at, where they at, okay? For those of you who do not enjoy A-A-V-E, we can speak it generally. Where they at, where they at. Or it, we are seeking them. <laughs> All right, so when I say next up on the microphone, y'all are going to say what? There we go, yell at me, right? because I would hate to have to have another conversation <laughs> like this with you, okay? Go to your room and think about this lesson, all right? Next up on the microphone, yeah, yeah, yeah. on deck, we have V, but coming to the mic right now, make some noise for Olivia! Yeah. I got a content warning for language, but only if you have a dirty mind. So, here we go. Under the condition that I was guilty for the time I took to start stealing space, I have been too big for my bones. The doctor said I was a firecracker, a screaming paper-wrapped fuse, small enough to blow because I invited a breath too ambitious for my lungs to hold. I was born this way, you know, the wise words of Lady Gaga, but there wasn't any singing when I was told we were cut short. Short-limbed, short-lived, my palm line lineage wasn't built with enough spine to stay silent. With enough time, I too can be stretched thin, tall enough to be seen for what I am. Apparently, my length is below average, yet the footprints I leave are full grown. I am confined to the clothes of a prepubescent boy, defined by baby steps in squeaky toddler stilettos. They wear me as if I am not the one being cropped to make statements. I write in crayon, but my ideas are beyond my body. I don't have my driver's license, but in my dreams, my metaphorical monster truck doesn't need a booster seat by the wheel. I am a choking hazard with the way I roll a high chair and all, but the steps I take take twice more footing than the average American. It is three commas worth of evolution telling me that despite not seeing eye to eye, my fucking rabbit feet have bigger shoes to fill. And if the only glass slippers I fit into are clown shoes, I will parade around in stilts to reach the new heights found in heaven. They stuffed a uterus in the space I occupy and grave the dialect of motherfucking cunt -ry on my taste buds, but told me not to preach in my native tongue. So if my hymns sound like gibberish, you just don't see things the way that I do. I've been told that there's potential in being below peripheral, that being invisible is the greatest blessing to be because to be perceived is to be flawed, to conform to a world that says short is for shortcomings, to be blind to the unseen is to fear the unknown, fear of four foot eleven and a half, the doctor reminds me, as if that half inch matters, scared of me. 
Four foot 11 and a half as if I don't parade around like five foot three, four, five and an 18th of ego on a good day. I offend the five something, the sometimes six three with the way I crane my neck to look up their nostrils. Stature doesn't define you, but statistically that one inch makes the difference. It's true. Ask any man under the patriarchy and they'll tell you that this is well over three inches. <laughs> Size does not matter. But it does when the stranger in the dark discovers your six-foot shadow is a shrinking figure. You are not the majority, only figuratively you stand out like a smacked down whack-a-mole in a carnival game. You are close but no cigar. You miss the mark so you can strut all you want, but the most posing you can do is as a model minority. Built to leave the smallest imprint on this world, be environmentally and economically optimal. But just because I have an appetite doesn't mean I'll eat my feelings to gain a few extra inches. I have never asked to be above another or be on par with privilege to look down at one for not being able to see beyond sun-kissed skin. The doctor said I was a firecracker. My first words were not a greeting, but a question. I let my voice out to ask for permission to be heard because it's not a right, but a privilege. A poet, not because I have a voice, but because without one, I do not exist. I may be too tall for the kids' menu, too short for the sliding door sensors, and not quite there for the vertical clearance in the parking lot, but I have built up the vocabulary to not need permission to speak, because I don't need you to hear me, because I know you do. Make some noise for Olivia! All right, all right, all right. So, we're gonna keep it going, y'all, keep it going. Next up on the mic, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm, uh, hold on. I'm gonna make sure, I'm, 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 I'm gonna make sure y'all ready. Next up on the microphone. There we go, I want y'all to, um, on deck, we have our feature, but coming to the mic right now, make some noise for B! Writing a love poem is the hardest thing in the world when you don't love yourself. I mean, I love a lot of things, like I love Spider-Man movies and rock music, I love doodling in the corner of the page, and I love freshly shaved legs and silk sheets, I love seeing graffiti on the streets, but I can't write a love poem. I can't pour my heart on an ode. I mean, I'm not opposed, but my words don't fit right, and it stings on the tongue to perform because love swings wide, and love is too sweet of a word that we've watered it down to zero sugar, low calorie, gluten-free, where there is no flavor. But you must say I love myself. Problem number one with loving myself is I don't know what that means. And frankly, neither do you. Is it, de is it devotion, obsession, or is it the same as like? We've blurred those lines. I can't write a love poem. I can't pen my words with blood straight from my veins because there is hardly enough for myself. How do I give a word I can't define? How do I donate what I don't have and I don't understand? Love poems are grueling with none left for yourself to spare. I starve to write outside my comfort zone. And you tell me healing starts in a therapist chair. You tell me healing starts through a religious prayer. But I know, I know healing starts when I can write a damn good love poem. Y'all show some love to the poet V. All right, all right, all right. So I know I mentioned to y'all that we're here tonight to select our Bay Area representatives for Brave New Voices. Can I you say Brave New Voices? All right, so Brave New Voices needs a little bit of help from folks in the space tonight, right? So if you're able to give a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five hundred, 
dollars $1,250, $779,000. If you're able to give it, we want it, okay? So we're going to post a QR code for you in just a few, but you just scan that QR code and give us a gift. I am awarding the highest gifter tonight with a special VIP prize from You Speaks. Say VIP prize. That means that you have given everything in your pocket to help support the young people at Brave New Voices. That will go towards the festival and go towards us sending our team out to D.C. Make some noise. Uh, Y'all ain't happy about that. Like, he asking for some money. I am. So uh, I'll be back on the Ask for some money. But I want y'all to give y'all love. Clap it up for our second feature of the night. Give it up for the amazingly talented Oakland Originals. If you guys want to see a breakdance show, everybody raise your hand. If you don't like English, just do this. Okay. Before we start this show, we have a couple of rules. Rule number one. You see something you like, you clap your hands. That's great. Rule number two. You see something you don't like and it sucks. You still clap. Everybody clap just in case. Okay, and rule number three. I need everybody here that's about to watch this show to get loud on the count of three for the sake of good energy. Let me explain something. Good energy equals good show. Bad energy equals bad show. What I'm trying to say is if this show sucks, if this show sucks, it's your fault. So please, get loud on the count of three. We don't care what you do to get loud. Slap the person next to you. Will Smith. Throw a baby in the air. Catch the baby. Go crazy on the count of three. Here we go. One. Three, everybody scream. DJ, hit it. We're going to show you all how to clap. Your hands should be in the clapping position. Everybody clap. Keep clapping. First on deck from Nigeria by way of East Oakland, California, we have the one and only B-Boy Gideon. Watch this. Clap, 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 clap. Everybody say, go Gideon, go Gideon, go. Say, go Gideon, go Gideon, go. Say, yeehaw. Say, yeehaw. Everybody make some noise. You know what? It's my turn. Everybody clap your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the light skin sensation, the one and only, the showstopper. This is the black flamingo. This is the other black flamingo. Everybody clap. Hey! Everybody clap. Hey, 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 go make some noise. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Uh oh, uh oh. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, if your man can't do this, leave him. Everybody clap your hands. Make some noise. If you want to see more, say yeah. yeah. Everybody clap like this. We're going to take it to, to a higher level. Everybody clap, come on. Everybody clap. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. We got a poet. We got a poet. Everybody clap. Oh, my bad. He was giving you a hug. All right. Wrong guy. That was a stand-in. Everybody clap. We got our first volunteer of the day. No, stay right there. It's okay. It's going to be okay. You can trust me. I'm from the ghetto. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Is that what I think it is? Could it be? We got a white guy. We got a white guy. We got a what? A what? We got a white guy. Pension plan, trust fund, 401k. Pension plan, trust fund, 401k. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. 
Stand right here. Oh, 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 I, oh, my bad. I forgot. Hold on. Hold on. Come with me. Crowd, make some noise for Rush Hour. All right, we're good. <laughs> Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. Now wave them. Now wave them. Now wave them. Now wave them. Wait, somebody say ho. Say ho. Say ho, ho. Say ho, ho, ho. Say hola, hola, hola. Say yo me gusta soda. Cut the music. Crowd, make some noise for your volunteers. That's right, some volunteered, some were voluntold. Now look, this is our grand finale. Grand finale. Everybody oh. say grand finale. Cool, if you're not sure what that is. If you don't know, find out. together. <laughs> Ugh, look at that. Look at the biceps. Ugh. Yes. Everybody say, ooh. Ooh. Say, ah. Ah. Here's what's going to happen. Okay. I'm going to run from that direction. That way. Really fast. <laughs> Black man in the sky. <laughs> Ding. Clap it up, please. Hey, we're getting good at this. Never cease to express. Turn and face <laughs> Yeah, can y'all so yeah to the left, to the left, to everything you own in the box to the left. Not this black speaker, the speaker on the ground. Thank you. You gotta make make it clear. Two, three, four, cinco, uno más. Yes, aquí. 
All right, get your cameras out, get your cameras ready, get out your iPhones, Samsungs. It's time for the grand finale. We're going to go viral, right? That was a joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hands on your chest. Elbows on your knees. You bend over. You, yeah. Bend your knees a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Head down, please. Grande culo. <laughs> All right, hold on. That's too much crack for one show. Hold on. It was on camera. I don't know who did that. <laughs> All right. Hey, with you. <laughs> you can get it on camera later. Everybody clap like this. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. When we say make some noise, y'all make some noise. Everybody make some noise. Thank you. That was our show. Thank you. The name of our team is Oakland Originals. If you like the show but want to see Mo, follow us on Instagram, please. Oakland like the city. Original like chicken with no flavor. Z at the end for flavor. Thank you for having us. We love you. Peace. Give it up for the Oakland Originals. Period, period, period. Y'all ready to get back to the slam? No, y'all not. Are y'all ready to get back to the slam? Next up, on, next up, on, next up, next up, next up, on, next up on the microphone. <laughs> on deck, we have May coming to the stage. Give your love to Mallory. After a poetry slam, one of my friends came up to me and said, I've heard you perform that poem before. And I was like, no, I wrote that like six hours ago. And we laughed because they think all my poetry sounds the same. <laughs> and they're not wrong because this was going to be another rape poem. So instead, I looked up slam poetry prompts on Google. The first prompt was the letter never delivered. And I think about the dozens of drafts I have from every new therapist that told me to write a letter to my rapist, undelivered. Letters carrying all the words I've left unsaid. Letters carrying more guilt than anger, paper weighted down by apologies instead of I hate you's letters that were supposed to heal this shame and this body, but instead gave me paper cuts and I watched as I bled out self-hate. The second prompt was I'm sorry. And I think about every time I've apologized for taking up too much space. I think about every time I've apologized for saying the word no. I think about that one poem I have that has the words I'm sorry in it 32 times already. I think about how I used to hold on to I'm sorry like a pocket knife to cut through his anger every time he turned frustration into a weapon. The third prompt was date rape. And I think about how I never know what to label what happened to me. How the police said, you weren't raped, you were domestically abused. How I still struggle to understand the difference between date rape and rape and sexual assault and domestic abuse. Isn't it all just hate? Isn't it all just hurt dressed up for legal purposes? Aren't you just wrapping up cruelty in a package to present to a court full of people who are also going to violate you, who are also going to pry another bone of self-esteem from your body when they tell you no? Is it no what we've been saying this whole goddamn time? The fourth prompt was, I had a dream, and I think about how I dreamt of him every night, then woke up and sweat to realize it wasn't just a nightmare, that I'm living in a flashback. Can you even call this a flashback anymore? The fifth prompt was the love I never had, and I think about how I've never been loved right. 
that the moment possessiveness is dropped into a love potion, it turns into poison, that I write about love all the time because I tell myself if I read it to myself on paper, I might get to know what it feels like, that every love poem I write never comes out right because love and sadness aren't supposed to exist in the same puzzle, and I think about how love is like water. If I was a flower, I'd be withering. The sixth prompt was why common sense isn't so common. And I think about how 14-year-olds should never know how to defend themselves from rapists. How looking, identifying red flags is not something people should be taught to look for. That carrying pepper spray in our purse is, it shouldn't have to be common sense. The seventh prompt was the incident that changed my life forever. And I think about how this wasn't supposed to be another rape poem. But that's all I could think about. That's all I could think about. Give it up for the poet, Mallory, one more time. Thank you for sharing your truth, Mallory. Can we take a moment to acknowledge the heaviness and that peace and just take a collective breath? Is that cool with y'all? On the count of three, we're going to inhale together. One, two, three, inhale. Exhale. One, two, three, inhale again. One, two, three, inhale. Exhale. Tell your neighbor, hey, neighbor, I love you. Hey, neighbor, thank you for sharing your truth. All right, so. Go ahead, Ignacio. You better, okay. I'm on time, I'm on time. Okay, so next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Joe. But coming to the mic right now, give it up for me. is for my Pakistani sisters. Sisters that dance with me in blood and sisters far across the seas. The waves calling to us, bringing us closer. They are faces I struggle to find in the neighborhoods of San Francisco. I call for them, hoping for a response, but all I am answered with is the echo of a heartbeat. I want to travel to the country my father was born where I can see a culture like my own, to see the same thick, blessed hair cascading down my sister's shoulders. I yearn to have my head sued with coconut oil and saffron garlands laced by sun-kissed bombs, to be dressed in gold-trimmed saris and a bindi pressed into my forehead, like the mark of my father's thumb, a symbol that he is a part of me even though I no longer remember his face. My sisters and I will dance under raindrops, sticking out our tongues to catch the gift God sent us today. We will sit under the acacia tree and eat the mangoes we stole from Dadi's garden until our tongues are taint tainted by the sticky sweet syrup and our lips can no longer taste. My sisters and I will play tag in the sugarcane fields, returning home with raw, scratched legs. We will bargain with the shopkeeper until he is fed up with our nerve and sells us bangles and henna for only 1,000 rupees. I would like to believe my sisters and I have a stronger bond than any blood ties or super glue, but I will never know. I am stuck in America, unaware of the lives my sisters lead far across the seas, because I can't travel 7,666 miles away to a country that is more dangerous than I know. So I stare outside my window and watch the San Francisco fog roll in, wondering what it feels like to oil my hair with coconut or lace a saffron garland, to have a bindi pressed into my forehead and dance in the rain, to sink my teeth into the flesh of stolen fruit and come home with legs gnawed by sugar cane. My sisters know what it's like. I wish I did too. <laughs> Give it up for the poet, May, one more time. All right, all right, all right. Next up on the microphone. Almost. Next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Hannah. But coming to the stage right now, give it up for Joe. I once taught a boy who I'll call James. See, the other kids said James couldn't talk, but truthfully, James could talk just fine. Not only fine, that boy swallowed dictionaries, he ate books one by one like popcorn, spit out mellifluous enigmas of perspicacity, he devoured words for breakfast. But sometimes he slurped them, slurred them, 
a little too hard. You see, James had a lisp, and because of this, the other kids made him feel like his tongue was sick, they made him feel like his voice was a choice, like his teeth weren't piano keys, making their own melody from the same notes. Notice how they made him feel like he was dumb. He, an eight-year-old reading double his age, but they made him hate the instrument in his own throat. It's not that he couldn't talk, he just wouldn't. I wanted to tell James his lisp wasn't a hindrance, his lisp was a declaration that he will sing the same melody under his own rules. And when the other kids called him unnatural, I wanted to tell them the only unnatural thing going on here was a group of clarinets shaming a piano for sounding different. I once taught a girl who I call Kayla. The other kids pinched their eyes and sang Ching Chong Kim Chi Chong, which, as every Asian knows, is the funniest joke white America has ever told. Instead of saying that, she'd say naka. Instead of saying baby, she'd say pei pei, a remix of the English baby and the Chinese bao pei. Her sentences and tenses splixed English and Mandarin spliced together with her favorite blue glitter glue. Her English was all breaststrokes, no times new Roman, and she has somehow added the four Chinese tones to the alphabet. I want to tell James his voice is softness in the vest mess of constant harsh consonants. I want to tell Kayla her linguistics are genius. I want to tell them they are perfect, but they're not. You can't pass English with a half Asian lisp the same way you can't pass the SAT with a haiku. The world is an orchestra that only lets wind instruments in. I should tell James tips on how to fix a lisp. I should tell Kayla to practice her English, wear an American tongue outside, and save her Chinese one for home, like PJs. But hell, I'm a poet. To the grammar police, I am a wanted fugitive anyway. Like those words earlier, if you caught it, Splixed and Snopes, I made those up, goddammit. So what are English rules anyway? In elementary English, we pour shapes on tongues that lips can't quite fit around, snap in half ideas that are too big, too wild for sentence structures. But we poets, we don't cut our children's wings to match the penguins downstairs. So I tell Jayla, I tell James, I tell Kayla to never stop singing. I ask them to look me in the eyes, I never apologize, and if someone tells you to bite your tongue, bite theirs, figuratively. Because you, if you are not talking in MLA format, you are talking poetry. And you know what white guys with long last names say about poets? Poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Legislators, I'm sure James knows what that means. It means when the world tries, it means when the rules threaten to break your neck, you break them instead. It means when the world tries to silence your song, you write a new world, one lispy S at a time. Thank you. Y'all give it up for Joe one more time. Judges, y'all got a hard job tonight. I would not want to be a judge for all these phenomenal poets. So we're going to keep things going. Next up on the microphone. Uh, don't y'all lose that energy. Next up on the microphone, yeah, yeah, yeah. on deck, we have Sochi. But coming to the mic, make some noise for Hannah. When I was a little girl, Spider-Man was my hero. Flying past tall buildings and gliding past shiny cars. If I attempted this, I'd be seeing stars. When I try to be strong like Spider-Man, I feel frozen from dark shadows crawling through my skin. The frozen fear I felt when my newborn baby brother melted in my arms, his stringy thin strands of hair, ornate details decorating his tiny little fingers and toes, flowers of small red dots, dried up tears, boogers and snot. He was a porcelain face. I clasped his hands and he clasped mine, his bubblegum toothless grin smiling, his thick long lashes fluttering like a dark brown moth. A web of inexplicable love formed in my heart. The first year of his life was a game of shoots and ladders, trying to figure out why he was crying, sent me back to math class solving Y equals X and math problems so complex it made my head twirl. But as he grew, so did I. I realized that sometimes babies cry for no apparent reason. This just made our connection deepen. I learned to love his quirks and imperfections, his determination as he lined up his Spider-Man toys. Those toys received more affection 
affection than me. Physical touch wasn't his love language. That I can guarantee, but a hug wasn't what we need. We had different goals because he filled up any empty space with his happy babbles, constructing elaborate webs of thoughts only his brain can detangle. All the knots of stress cut free with his joyful squeals. Flash forward. My baby brother grew 18 months old, and my parents sat me down to tell me about his diagnosis. It was something deeper than what the eye could catch, something that abruptly jumped into my world in just a flash. A few months prior, I was in my room watching TV when I heard my mom scream, her eyes panicking, my stomach twisted. She was holding up my brother's head. Call the hospital, she said. Boiling tears seemed down my cheeks. The rest of the night was blurry streaks. I remember my mother rushing to the hospital. I remember the tick-tock of the crooked clock. I remember my stomach spinning like a carousel, feeling spider legs inch up my back. I remember the delicate porcelain that made up my brother cracked. I couldn't be his Spider-Man, even with his safety at stake. I tried to stand up straight, but my legs were as thin as spider's silk. Tick tock, tick tock. The only thing keeping me company was that callous clock. Finally, I got the call. It was a seizure in the hospital. He had four more. A silk thread weaved through my brain and tangled together. So they drugged him up until I couldn't recognize his cry. I watched as my baby brother transformed from squealing toddler to mindless zombie. The meds made his mind wander. I'd be talking to him, but he'd be in wonderland. I couldn't grasp what was happening. I couldn't understand. The, the thought of him hurting burned like a red, round spider bite. I can't stop scratching. But then I saw his goofy grin again. A crooked smile chakrated with a chipped front tooth. A glimmer of hope bought away my fear. I don't need to be dressed in blue and red. I don't need to pretend that he can always depend on me. All I needed to do was love him more than my biggest hero. Give it up one more time for the poor Hannah. Make some noise, make some noise. We're almost done with round one, y'all. That is crazy. We're going to know who our top eight are in just a few more poets. So next up on the microphone, yeah. on deck, we have Leanne. Coming to the mic right now, give it up for Zochi. Mother is terrifying. Mother is daunting, why didn't use and disappointed stares. She's high-heeled and sharp-edged reminders and look back upon to see how far you've come from shitty beginnings. Mother is waiting at home with guilty home-cooked meals devoid of love, preaching respect for your mother who put you into this world. Mother is cold, but my mom is warm. My mom is full of soft corners, loving smiles, water off a duck's back type attitude when she can afford it, crinkles and dips that show just how much she's put her smile to good use. My mom is yes and's problem fixer upper, hold back for other people's emotions which ring loud in a space she maintains quiet. She loves what she loves and judges the rest. However subtle that look in her eye, we have in common a lot of genes under the skin. You can tell my mother cares in a fierce don't you dare. Firm nose, I hate makes sense. Ribbons wrap my lungs in their love suffocation, I should say, but I don't have the words. I tell my mom a little too much. Her shoulder is ripping from the weight of my leaning. The places my prints are up and down her arm. The grip of a child who knew this person could make the world a little less dark could make it make sense for fleeting seconds in her arm. And I wonder how she felt when I looked like my father. When people assume we aren't even related, when her appearance next to mine fails to make sense, I wear her scarves out of the house and tell people when I steal her concealer three shades too light that I look like my mother. I wonder if she wishes I resemble her in more way than one. If my shortcomings spill over into the space that strikes a nerve, I stay quiet in ignorant bliss. I will never know the specifics of who my mother wanted for my own well-being. I think it's best. Sometimes I forget she's still my mother. Sometimes I forget that she's good at her job. 
Sometimes she doesn't let me drag her down to the depths of my fuck ups and the back of my mind wonders if she still loves me, which disgusts me. How dare I diminish the image of a woman living life for the first time like she has all the answers to the mind she grew without knowing how I'd turn out, how brave the act. Charging into the unknown of my adolescence, into my expensive tastes I didn't know were expensive, mood swings and my fault fights, teenage girl bullshit so tiring to relive thorns of my love she has learned to ignore over the years. My mom takes me on trips to pumpkin patches. She buys me Legos and princess dresses. She lets me cut my hair as short as I want. My mom flies me through the skies of our living room and lets me fall without fear. We sing and we laugh and I look like my father but her voice is somewhere inside. She'll wait a few years till I learn how to carry a tune and think that's my girl, my mother, is musical duets of long car rides passing down lyrics telepathically. My mother made me a performer. Mother gives me gray hairs and judgment-free talks about life happening too fast. Reminders and look back upon how far you've come from her beginnings. Love-filled, take out respect for my mother who put me into this world. We haven't played airplane in years but her lullaby still lulls me to sleep and security, and soon I will leave home singing my mother's song. Shout out to the mothers! Make some noise if you love your mom. I'm going to call my mom. I love. So we have reached our last poet in the first round. Make some noise for yourselves. We did it, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. So, next up on the microphone. Next up on, that was chaotic. Next up on the microphone. Give all of your love to the last poet in the first round. Give it up for Lee. The library shelves are old, wood worn smooth, some years of books sliding over its surface. I trail my fingers over the spines, the covers crinkling under my touch. They call to me. I pull a book out at random, hold it in my hands, and feel the paper. It is titled White Bird, the story of a Jewish girl's survival during the Holocaust. I flip through the pages and admire the artwork. A line catches my eye. You see, Julian, it always takes courage to be kind. But in those days when such kindness could cost you everything, your freedom, your life, kindness becomes a miracle. It becomes that light in the darkness that Papa talked about, the very essence of our humanity. It is hope. Ron DeSantis and company don't want us to learn this lesson. <laughs> Books teach us lessons of humanity. Books are miracles, the product of the hours of time, work, and love that authors pour out onto paper, their gift to the world. They teach us, make us think and wonder, make us ask questions. So my question is, why ban books? Right. Banning books is a symptom of illness in our society. Illness that breeds contempt for minorities, the unknown, the powerless. Book banners boast about the right to control what we read. By doing that, they dampen voices we need to hear. We are not perfect, but our nation is based on hope. We are always striving for a more perfect union. That hope is crushed when books are banned, ripping away stories that need to be told. If voices can be so easily muzzled in America, what hope do people yearning for freedom have in Russia, China, Ukraine, Gaza? Silencing books by banning them only leads to silencing people by bombing them. Over 3,000 books were banned last school year. These books are marked as a blazing fire, the pages kindling, the words a match. If anyone opened them, they would raise everything to the ground. Without representation, the kids who see themselves in these pages may lose hope. They feel alone, outcast. Books can save their lives, prevent deaths by suicide, keep them from becoming a tragic statistic. In my reading life, I have been in a courtroom with Scout Finch, taught school with Anne Shirley, fled from Pakistan with Nisha, fell in love alongside Nick and Charlie, fought battles with Fang Runan. Without these books, I would not be who I am today. They helped me become brave and strong. And they showed me that my, how to use my voice and that my voice matters. I'm lucky to live in California where books are not as likely to be banned. 
as a Chinese American female, representation makes me feel seen. It lets me see myself in the characters and lets me imagine a world where I am the protagonist and not just a quirky sidekick. But what about the gay kids in Florida or kids of color in Texas? They wander alone in a world with no guide, maybe forever lost. As I stand in front of this library shelf, I look up and see a stranger staring disapprovingly at me. When I look back down, Whitebird is gone. In that moment, I know ignorance needs to be met with strong voices and hope, speaking the truth of all our citizens. We will fight for those who cannot do it themselves. We must not let our stories be extinguished. Give it up for the last part in the first round, Leanne! Amazing, amazing work, amazing work. Give it up for yourselves for an amazing audience. Clap it up. Thank y'all so, so much, so, so much. So before we jump into round two, the judges, the host, and I got to link up really, really quickly so we can know who our top eight are. Let me hear you say top eight. Top eight. Top eight. It doesn't matter about these scores. It doesn't matter who makes the team. What matters is these young people getting free with their voice. Amen? Amen. All right. So I'm going to bring up our next feature performer. I want y'all to give it up for Skelly Ball. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Cut the music. Uh-uh, cut, cut it. Uh-uh. Go back. Go back. Go back. Y'all not going to play with these young people, okay? I already told y'all we're going to be outside in the parking lot if y'all play, okay? So I need y'all to give all that energy and all that love to every young person that touches this stage and this mic, okay? Is that cool, y'all? And if it's not cool, if you want this fade, come and get it, okay? So when I say skelly, y'all say bull. Skelly. Skelly. When I say skelly, y'all say bull. Skelly. Skelly. Make some noise for our feature performer one more time. That's me up there, that's crazy. It's a war within every single one of us. Living in depression won't get up, you collecting dust. If you don't got it inside, you'll often search for love, but you'll never find it. Everybody making posts, nobody living private. Everybody want to judge and all opinions bias. Tell me why we living like this. Ain't nobody got no love for their neighbor. I see myself within you. We is God's creation. I struggle with commitment. Sorry, babe, I canceled our plans because something else that came up. East Oakland, no, I came from the mud. Though I wasn't involved, I seen people I love become victim to the streets that they run. Tell me who was chasing you. It ain't no longer a you, it's a us. Tell me who was chasing you. It ain't no longer a you, it's a us. It ain't no longer a me, it's a must. God chose me as a prophet, got a mission to complete. I'm the one. Come on. My name is Skelly Bo, this is my song, Surviving. It's about chasing a journey that only you have. Uh, people ask my future plans, I see their face and I say music. Good luck, have fun, just keep doing it. Like I'm just another black boy rapping. At least I'm not another black boy trapped in, lying in a casket. Got a dream, I'm trying to make it happen. And my family saying that it won't. Got this pressure on my back and I just chase results. My mama say priorities wrong, go to school. No love in it, I say I don't fuck with it. Me and you measure success a little different. 20K, I'm indebted, you must be tripping. Take 20K, invest in me and my own business. Got my own mission, got my own vision. See, walking out of line, I'm like a wolf among this flock of sheep. Congratulations, Captain Gal, when they got your degree. Now, fit this application out so you could work for me. No, it ain't for me. Clacking in and clacking out, just know it ain't for me. Paycheck every two weeks, no, it ain't for me. Drive to work, driving home, go to sleep and then repeat. Life I wanna leave one with some in peace. Say the life I wanna leave one without a set routine. Why you selling me short? I cannot sell myself short. I'm trying to change lives. Yeah, this road I walk, it ain't no paved lines. I tell them, 
It's my life. Yeah, I choose to gamble all the dice, but this time I'm praying that I see the seven on top. Been knowing me until this heart stop. Never start writing to this mind, stop thinking. Never start speaking to these lungs, start breathing. When these lungs start breathing, start this rapid shit for good. Right now, I wish I could. I couldn't if I try running out of ink. I cut my wrist and bleed all on these lines. Don't you try me. Ain't no rapper, that's how they identify me. I'm an artist if you see the way that I see. But in this garden, this dad is poison ivy. Don't you try me, I just keep fighting. I need guidance, who's lost as I am? Demons hiding, demons hiding. I keep fighting, I keep on trying. I keep surviving, I keep surviving. Saying I keep surviving, I keep surviving, I keep surviving, no. Uh. I keep surviving, no. Uh. I keep surviving. I keep surviving, uh, 99 and 99, uh, 99 and 99. If you survive and clap with me, 99 and 99, uh, 99 and 99, uh, 99 and 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, uh. I want to thank everybody for sharing that moment with me. Um, it takes a lot for everybody that comes up here and expresses themselves, be vulnerable. Um, I'm not ignorant to I'm not ignorant to life. I understand that each of us are our own individual with our own dreams and plans. We all going through something. We all have goals, we all have family, we all have problems, we all have people we love. Um, make sure you understand that as you walk through life and you see someone you think may be opposed to you, that we are all one and the same, one people, one love. My name is Skelly Bo, S-K-E. <laughs> S-K-E-L-Y-B-O. Um, and if you'd like to Follow me on my journey, stay in contact with me. Um, you can find my music, my light, my words on all social media platforms, music platforms. Thank you, You Speaks. Thank you, San Francisco. Thank you, world. Yeah. Y'all give it up for Skelly Bo one more time. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all see how you speak, we got it all. We got rap, we got dance, we got poetry, we got intention, we got intellect, we got inspiration. Over here at You Speaks, okay? Y'all want a piece of You Speaks, follow us at You Speaks on Instagram, um, period. Shout out to <laughs> all right, y'all ready for round two? Are y'all ready for round two? All right. Next up on the microphone, we have our top eight. Make some noise for our top eight. In no specific order right now, I want you to clap it up. Hey, I'm just saying these boys' names, and I want y'all to give love. Is that cool? Give love, all right? Hannah, make some noise. Selma, make some noise. Zochi, make some noise. Mallory, make some noise. Joe, make some noise. Leanne, make some noise. Olivia, make some noise. And Marvin, make some noise. All right, all right, all right. So before we jump into round two, I want to make sure I give a shout out to one of our, our highest gifter of the night. I don't know if y'all forgot, but this is a poetry slam, fundraiser, concert, hip hop takeover things over here at You Speaks, OK? So we asked for our highest um, gifter. We'll get a special VIP gift, Mimi, after the show. I want to bring up Shelly Metamonte. Shelly, where you at? 
Hey, Shelly, clap it up for Shelly. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. You will get our first VIP gift of the night, but it does not stop there. If everybody in this room gave $5, $10, we will reach our goal. Dig into your phones. We accept Cash App. We accept Zelle. We accept Venmo. We accept personal check. We accept cold, hard cash. We accept WIC. We accept EBT. We accept all those things because we need to eat as well as we need to get free. Amen? Yeah. All right. So next up on the microphone. No, no, no. Hey, we not starting round two like that. I want y'all to get up on y'all feet. Get up on your 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 feet. Stretch. Reach to the heavens. Stretch, reach to the heavens, reach out to your side, don't hit your neighbor. Woo! Let me say woo! Woo! Let me say period. Let me say period. Let me say lemon pepper wings. Say lemon pepper wings. Now I want y'all to give all the energy y'all just expounded out to round two. Make some noise! There we go, there we go, there we go. Next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Marvin. But coming to the stage right now, we're trying to give all your love to Olivia. this much but this is so please take my boobs they were not on my Christmas list I did not ask for the weight I bear where my heart beats unevenly they appeared like presents one day under the tree not quite the usual Christmas mass I was used to with lack of singing and angels but a gift nonetheless when I pulled the bow and what I thought was a ribbon unraveled into a strap the thin bralettes that crawled in my, to my closet the way little doll clothes do in the same way that they never laid flat, but instead a mountain on the floor, an anthill really, given the size of the doll, but you know. I thought that with time they would grow bigger, better, like those little capsules that grow sponge animals when you put them in water, but they <laughs> remained a consistent size for years. They weren't defective or broken. In fact, I think they arrived perfectly intact but they were nothing like they were in magazines and on TV. They weren't geometric, hard edge, radical, or soft to the touch, physics defying like cartoons had me believe. The girls in anime taught me it was possible to achieve or plastic and nippleless like the ones my Barbies and Hawk girl figure had. At the time, to think that my 11 inch role model was unrealistic would have been sacrilegious. I tried to appreciate them, look at the words of wisdom, to mutter to myself in the mirror. When Kim Petras came out with her song, Coconuts, I tried to connect to the lyrics. When she said, look at these margarita tas, I tried to look at my margarita tas, but I had no urge to name them like twins, nor believe that all good things came in twos. I thought too much what I'd be like without them. If I were just as bendy as heated plastic, I'd unscrew them so every morning the jarring discomfort would be no more. I would see them sitting on my shelf, sitting there ever so politely next to my watch. I would go down the stairs and back up again just because I could without the weight on my chest literally tugging on me. I'd give them a plaque, thanking them for their service, sending them off with a patriotic salute. Eventually, I'd bury them in a national park, in their own little casket with a pretty pink bow, in hopes that in years to come, when I'm dead and gone, they'll be unearthed and displayed in an art museum for art critics enthusiasts to like. If it were possible, I would have gotten a refund, but I guess these things just don't come with receipts, much less return policies. So I waited and waited, hoping that they'll turn into a foster failure because all I want for Christmas is some true closure. So please, please take my boobs. They were not on my Christmas list. Give it up for Olivia. All right, judges, get it right, get it right. All right, y'all, so I just want to remind y'all the ways that y'all can show love to the poet. I want to see a snap, hey. Okay, 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 okay. We're the poetry slam, we're the poetry slam. 
Catch me later. All right, so I want to remind y'all how to show love to these poets. Let me see your snaps. Where your snaps at? Don't forget that. I want to hear your mm's and your snaps. Mm. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Bring the thunder. Let me hear it. Bring the thunder. There we go. There we go. Don't forget these things. These poets need that. They feed off of that, right? What did Oakland Original say? If the show is bad, that's your fault. Because <laughs> you didn't give love or energy, okay? So make sure you see ourselves one more time. Next up on the microphone. Now, didn't I just, didn't I just say, get it? Cut the music. So, we have to have this conversation again, all right? I thought you learned the first time. So I'm gonna take your Xbox and your Playstations and your privileges in this room tonight, okay? So, when I say next up on the microphone, what are you to do? How loud should you be? We should feel that energy all up and through this room, okay? Is that all right? If that's gonna be difficult for you, I don't know if this is the space for you, okay? We love you and it's all right. Next up on the microphone. There we go, on deck, we have Selma coming to the mic right now. Give it up for Marvin! How much love will follow if I question your faith? Tell me, how much love will follow when you hear me say, you're praying to fantasies. It's sad to see. Abuela said, thank God for all you see. I see generations of lost men lacking maturity, born a calamity, overcompensated masculinity just to prove their validity. Toxic culture, born a shared trauma that's catching on us. Stuck in a victim mentality, praying to the same man who sat to see rape and bloodshed at land and sea. See, the rapture was here in the 1500s. Cortez came over, killing hundreds. And at the hands of the captor, I'm straight from a lineage of beaten actors. Told to pick a goddess, saint, our minds were captured. Cause you ain't free till you denounce the captor's beliefs. The white man who came in, providing relief. Oppressive beliefs to keep him docile and hopeful for the coming of Christ. Losing your old gods was the ultimate price. Forgiveness is your vice. Convenient given who gave you that advice. And as I adorn my Jaguar regalia, I'll tell you, that man ain't your savior, and God has failed you. Forgiveness must have turned off your vision, or you must not use the television. Because every night I replay the rhetoric when they say, see, I watch your crimes. See, I know they lie. See, the statistics don't lie. You say we see eye to eye, but your ignorance prevails. The veils that, preve veils that prevent you to see I'm bright. Hmm. Du Bois was right, veils that surround you, front to back and left to right. Du Bois was right, huh? Even with your veil torn, you'll disregard our fight. How we excel while your government wants to see us fail. Like take them leaders out of jail, cracking the community, you know it well, huh? White demon you can't expel, you'll writhe when Jesus arrives. You'll writhe when Jesus arrives, huh? Your politicians is first to go to hell. I don't need a mortician, I've known it well. Heartless, just entails that entail hunger and greed. That American thirst I've known so well. Don't you read? Laws from your bloodthirst, the nation of problems, but you say I'm first. Oh well, I've seen worst, for I've been cursed. Yeah, I stand. As the ultimate proof of resilience, I've survived the killer by being him and deceiving him. The Spanish stamp upon my lineage, the Spanish stump upon the river's edge. River, that is my blood and those before me. In that river I notice them. Rios that carry my tios, tias, abuelas, abuelos, and those before them. I notice them, and they tell me, mijo, we've taken root in every corner of the world, intertwined the remnants of a lost culture into that which was imposed. Cerca de extinción, we have come back stronger. Claim this culture as ours. Recognize your power. Reconoce tu poder. Give it up for the poet Marvin. All right, all right. I heard y'all giving love. Keep that energy, keep that love going. Next up on the microphone. See, you're learning. I love that. On deck, we have Hannah. Coming to the mic, give all your love to Selma. Yeah. 
content warning for mention of rape. Recently, I have been constantly saying I'm sorry to my mom's strawberry freckled face. And I realized my words hold little weight if I keep making the same mistakes. Our world is saturated with apologies that are hollow like the wood of a dying tree. We aren't gambling with risk when we repeatedly hurt the ones we love because we expect their forgiveness. Similarly, our world relies on the power of eloquent yet empty apologies to cover up atrocities. We produce 35 billion tons of CO2 each year and hope that our apologies will cleanse our dirty air and convince the earth we still care. For every single apology heard by the ears of women who are raped every two minutes in America, not a single one could ever hold enough weight. The world sits back watching old imperial powers uninvitingly invading countries like a disease and leaving them with a common symptom of corrupted and bankrupted governments. Their apologies and fa false promises of new policies will forever fall upon generations of deaf ears. Even now, when more than 33,000 Palestinians have been murdered, the world says sorry from the comfort of their seats in the stands. If only the world could see that one sorry doesn't erase the gutting pain of grief. I don't want more people to apologize. I just wish they would open their eyes because I'm not God. I don't need to hear your repentance. I just want to see you try to fix what you broke with more than a single sentence. That's how your apologies will ever receive true acceptance. We need to give up on mining more oil to fuel war and just plant some more trees before dead bodies become the only thing on the Earth's floor. We have to deconstruct systems of power people abuse and re-engineer democracy so our history can start to fade like an old bruise and not fester like an infection. Stop sending weapons and start sending more aid because saying sorry after a genocide means the sorry was planned to be too late. Someone once told me the terror in Gaza would never end, could never be stopped. And the moment my brain could even comprehend what they had said, my heart dropped because I refused to believe people with hope are a dying breed. Because giving up is the equivalent of saying you don't believe those suffering can succeed. I'm not a psychologist, but when it comes to apologies, it feels if people say I'm sorry for Palestine and nothing else, it feels like they're accepting defeat. And to our world leaders who idly stand staring at genocide and not reaching out their hands, your apologies, although grand, are as impactful as grains of sand. Now, I don't mean for you all to misunderstand. Apologies are not meaningless. They just have to be delivered alongside a tangible plan to fix and foster hope, to promise to rebuild trust and broken homes, to ignite our actions with intentions of loving and not the fear of losing. And once our apologies become genuine and not painfully hollow, the promise of change will illuminate a light for bystanders and those accepting defeat, a poet's plight complete. After all, saying I'm sorry has always felt ever so bittersweet. Y'all give it up for Selma! All right, all right, it's getting good, it's getting good. Next up on the microphone. Ooh, next up on the microphone. I love it. On deck, we have Sochi. Coming to the mic right now, give all your love to Hannah. A plain white notebook, empty, blank. Ideas flow from the pen, and it's not my mind moving. It's my hands maneuvering on the page, lines and dots singing on the page, from blank to filled drawings on the page. I draw, I write, I sketch and scribble. The page is my domain, erasing any pain, trying to catch my thoughts as they run rampant in my brain, connected to my performance, the only things I can control, my pen, my voice, and nothing else. So when COVID hits, the way 
away, flies over my head, and dunks me in the water. They said just a few weeks, a break from school, but the shallow water converts to a rapid whirlpool, and I'm trapped. And when I try to swim out, it's no use, so my parents use it as an excuse, and soon I'm in a plane on the other side of the country. We're moving to Michigan. It happened so abruptly. I'm not happy. One thing I can't control. The only things I can control, my pen, my voice, and nothing else. Sometimes I feel like that's enough, but right now I have to call my bluff because currently it feels like a wave that keeps crashing down. I'm swimming, but my head keeps getting dunked in water. I try to prepare. I swear I'm aware, but it feels like the finish line is never there. Preschool, kindergarten, high school, college, work, provide, get married, have kids. It's just too much to think about. Too much up in the air. Too much I can't control. The unknown feels so alone. I take myself back to the moments and memories that make the endless waves less scary. I think of art class and it helps to remember that the waves never last, that they always pass. I think of my sketchbook, the dots and lines, the individual designs, my hands moving as my brain guides. It's one thing I can control, a constant thing I can always control. And as the wave comes and goes, I realize my strength begins to grow. I cannot control everything. My life will not be unvarying, and I need to stop pushing down all these bad feelings if I even want to try to start healing, because the panic attacks and inability to relax have had too big of an impact. It's consumed me. If I let go, can I be free? The waves will continue to keep crashing down, but the moments where the tide falls back seem all the more meaningful to me. Because there's never a guarantee that something set in stone, there will always be an unknown. So whether it's drawing with a stick in the sand or building castles on land, it can all be washed away in a heartbeat. One wave, one breath, one wink of an eye, and the wave retreats. The only things I can control, my pen, my voice, and one thing else, my ability to accept myself. Give it up for Hannah! Period, period. We have some amazing poets tonight. We've had amazing poets across all of the slams. Y'all give our young people a round of applause one more time. Again, it doesn't matter who wins, who loses. What matters is they're getting free through their poetry over here at Youth Speaks. Follow us on Instagram at Youth Speaks. Thank you so much. All right, next up on the microphone. Don't lose it. Next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Mallory. But coming to the stage right now, give your love to Zochi. I don't think I have much to offer, but my 1A bird's nest shower every other day type quality doesn't have a beautiful appeal, nor does the dirt shoved under my nails to be different. I don't make the ground shake with my platform shoes. My body is a battlefield I refuse to fight on. I tried to bleach my hair, but the chemicals never stuck, and my complicated complexion sports unibrows and divots that don't blend into your aesthetic. You don't want me in your bouquet. You wouldn't know what to do when you get your hands on me. I fake it till you let go. I twist and bend until I enjoy the only sensations you know how to bring. I have a complicated history of letting pretty people praise whatever it was worthy of attention. A boy I have no interest in makes eye contact and I feel beautiful. I weave my way around these hands that don't know how to hold me or notice a sharp intake, something faked or a heartbreak brushed off like she was last week's news. Notice me, but not until I'm ready. Not until I'm pretty in a way that sparks admiration because I appreciate it, but this lust is becoming too heavy for a child to hold. Not until I can squeeze into my prom just, just this week in a week or two, I'll slim myself down to a personality between ribs and skin sallowed. Not until I can dispel the smoke from my lips in a way that whispers sexy girl. Love me from the rooftops in a whisper only I can hear. 
shout it for someone who didn't need subtlety in the first place, appreciate quietly my quality, the way I built myself from cigarettes on curbsides, boring interests, size two dreams, pocketed panties, chipped nails, cherry blood, lip gloss, sour shit, I don to make me easier to perceive as a concept, sexy girl is all I want to be. The pretty people privilege and praise you will never regret giving the ugly girl a chance. Ugly girl is funny. Ugly girl gives up late nights sober to live life fuller. Ugly girl is easy pickings for boys like boys can be. Ugly girl is a shapeshifter for love. I am the expert of waiting for someone who's proud of my pretty. I will know how to be beautiful for my love when they find me. I've practiced on fleeting faces and hands that wander without substance. I've subconsciously woven them into boxes of poems and hopes that I keep secret under my bed. I will find this love while walking down the beach in the middle of the night. They'll come from the water dripping glass and leave the scent of seaweed on my skin. Their touch will be softer than sand, but rough enough to be real. We will be forbidden from each other, but I don't mind. I'll drink poison for a heart I just met because I felt for a second the tandem rhythm. They'll paint my lips red with rose oils and call me with a siren's tongue, pretty girl. How do you look just right? Bottle my blood, pretty girl. Harvest my affection. I give you privilege and fancy of pretty girls like you, I will know how to love my love when they find me. I will love someone who is proud of my pretty, who will fight for my body as I never learned how. Yeah. Make some noise for the poet Zochi! Period. Shout out DJ Ignacia. All right, so. I have a very special announcement for y'all. Are y'all ready? Y'all sure? Y'all wanna hear some good news? For the first time in Youth Speaks, no, I'm playing. No, but y'all did what I asked y'all to do. We have successfully raised $3,146 tonight for Brave New Voices. Make some noise for all of y'all in the house. All of our gifters, thank you so, so much. That money goes directly towards our young people as we prepare for the Brave New Voices Festival that is themed thin and fierce after our amazing Sydney M. Edwards. Make some noise for y'all. So, next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Joe. Coming to the mic right now, give your love to Mallory. Michelangelo, one of the most influential artists of all time, said that sculpting is the art of carving out and discarding. Anorexia, one of the most influential artists of all time, said that starving is the art of carving out and discarding. Our audience always views our creations incorrectly. This is not about aesthetic. This is artificial anesthetic. This is carving away life in hopes of finding death at the center. Pretty isn't on our to-do list, neither are groceries. We're just striving for a body we're willing to stick around for. We're not wearing rose-colored glasses. We see our bodies in the reflection of funhouse mirrors, except nothing about anorexia is fun. Three years after weight restoration, and I still find pieces of the girl I used to be discarded on the bathroom floor. I still don't know how to get rid of the numbers and calories circling around in my brain. I thought that chipping away at my body would chip away at the memories plastered on my mind. I thought cutting calories to shrink this body would get rid of the flesh that had been untouched by unwanted hands, but some things are too permanent to be cut out. Sometimes the chisel isn't enough to break through a lifetime of hurt. Eating disorders are almost always comorbid. Carving and discarding our bodies is our attempt to cure the mental illnesses no one else seems to be able to get rid of. That's why anorexia is one of the most morbid conditions. Because once your chisel passes through layers of flesh, you are forced to start working on the heart, brain, 
bones, liver, sculptures have no need for hair, so anorexics don't either. Sculptures have no need for food, so anorexics don't either. Sculptures have no need for heart, so anorexics turn into stone day by day. Sculptures have no need for menstrual cycles, so my body stopped having one for four years. There is no pill for anorexia. Recovering from anorexia is fucking work. Recovering from anorexia is adding instead of discarding, which is fucking hard when everyone has told you to, to subtract everything uncomfortable in your life from the equation. I realized today that anorexia is not an art form. It is destruction. The goal of your project is complete when your sculpture is not a sculpture anymore when all the flesh has been chipped away to reveal the lifeless corpse at the center. That's why they say the best anorexic is a dead one. For the first time in my life, I didn't want to be the best if perfection meant cremation. I didn't want to be perfect. So slowly, I began building. And once I started living, I started creating, molding a life for myself, writing a life for myself instead of tearing it down. Bring the thunder, bring the thunder, bring the thunder, bring the thunder! Give it up for the poor Mallory one more time. Wow. I hope you understand the amount of courage and bravery it takes to literally share your soul in front of family, friends, and strangers. Make some noise for that, y'all. This is not easy shit. This is not easy for these poets. And I need y'all to understand that, right? It takes so much courage, so much bravery. Shout out to every poet that's touched this mic. Clap it up for them one more time. Amazing work, poets. So we're almost at the end of round two. So next up on the microphone. Wait, I'm sorry. Before I say that, our top six poets will be going on to compete at Brave New Voices, the International Youth Poetry Slam Festival in Washington, D.C. The top six poets will also receive a cash prize courtesy of Youth Speaks. Period. So next up on the microphone. On deck, we have Leanne. Coming to the mic right now, give your love to the poet, Joe!
Give it up to the poet, Joe. Wow, wow. We said we're sharing truth, we're sharing power here tonight at the Teen Poetry Slam Finals. So, we've come up to our last poet in round two. We're about to find out our top six in a few. So, next up on the microphone, it's the last time, make it count. Next up on the microphone, Make some noise for the last port in round two. Finishing off Team Poetry Slam Finals. Make some noise for Leanne. I see Thestrals. I've developed a superpower that only doctors and cancer-detecting dogs should have. This power, which isn't really super, it's like an unbidden sixth sense, one that no one wants. I definitely don't. With this superpower, you begin to notice illness all around. The grocery store, school, your friend's homes. You see that person wearing a beanie and two jackets in 80 degree weather. You notice the sallow skin, hollow cheeks, dark circles under the eyes. You know what they're going through, even if they're a complete stranger. The superpower is something that all of us will eventually gain. Hopefully you won't until you're older. I obtained mine when I was 12. Cancer snuck into our lives, the uninvited guest who crashed the party. Let me prepare you for some of the things people say after you lose a loved one. Your superpower will not prepare you for this. They will always be with you, at least not in pain anymore. The first year is always the worst. It will get better with time. They're in a better place. Everything happens for a reason. And the worst one yet actually said to my mom, be glad you have kids. You have something to live for. Thank you, but no thank you. None of that helps and none of it is true. There is no reason that my dad died from cancer and he is not in a better place. A better place is here with me. Most people have good intentions. Their words don't hurt that much. It's the offhand remarks that do. You're still not over it? I see Thestrals. I read Harry Potter when I was 10, long before J.K. Rowling pulled a charm riddle and turned into a transphobic villain. <laughs> Harry Potter, Harry first sees the Thestrals when he's 15, after witnessing Cedric Diggory's death. Little did I know that I would be able to see them too. After my dad died, I read the book Glitter Gets Everywhere. This stuck with me. Someone at the hospice told me that grief is like glitter. If you throw a handful of glitter in the air, even if you try your very best to clean it up, you'll never get it all. To know the horrors of Thestrals is to also know the potential beauty of glitter, the darkness and the light, but only if you make the light. So as a friend, how can you help make the light? With compassion. Sympathy, empathy, and compassion. Three responses that people think are similar but are actually quite different. I'm sorry for your loss, that sounds awful. Sympathy is neutral, there's nothing wrong with it, but you can do better. I'm sorry for your loss, my mom died last year, I know how you feel. Empathy, connecting with your past experience helps both you and the griever feel a little better. I'm sorry for your loss, can I bring you dinner tomorrow night? Compassion, adding action to help the griever in a meaningful way. You can't take someone's grief away, but you can walk through it with them. Glitter is everywhere. I can't wash it away, but I can use it to honor my dad. I see the glitter and recognize when people need compassion. It is a way to make my superpower seem less terrible. I see Thestrals, but I know how to make the glitter sparkle. That is the end of round two of Team Poetry Slam Finals! Amazing, amazing work, poets. Thank you so much for sharing your truth and your honesty and your bravery on this stage. We love you, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. So, Gretchen, what's Tigre? Hello, 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 hello. Y'all remember me? Hi. What's good, what's good? Wow, the judges was judging, okay? In the best ways and the worst ways. You will never know, because it's none of your business. You feel me? But we was having a great time. How y'all feel, judges? Y'all good? Amazing, amazing poems, but are y'all ready to hear just one last poem? 
Because, you know, you know, I, I'm not a STEM girly, you feel me? I need a little bit of time to calculate. So I want you guys to hear another... Are y'all trying to hear just one more poem? Is that cool? I don't know if you guys are ready because um, you're about to hear from a Chicago legend. You might not know, but you've been getting kind of roasted by this person this whole night. You feel me? You've been kind of getting scolded, but you were into it because we're, you know, we're, we, we love feedback. You feel me? This person is a multi-dimensional, multi-talented artiste, okay? Not just an artist of word, but an artist of the body, of the movement, of the culture, of everything. This person is my twin them, and I know that they do everything with what intention and love and representing everybody that's upon their shoulders. I I don't think you're ready. I need you to make some noise for your wonderful MC who's about to bless y'all right now. Make some noise starting right now. Starting right now. Starting right now. Starting right now. Give it up for Darius. Beyonce. Stream Cowboy Carter. I love you. I love you. Oh. <clears throat> oh, freedom. Oh, 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 oh freedom. Oh, oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. I know what your racism tastes like. The bitter tingle of sweat and blood, much like the colored only water fountains we used to drink from, swallowing desert and lie like molasses chains, mirror that which were used to bind our ancestors, cold like metal, hot like whip on back. My name is not Toby, my name is not MA868 5931. I am not defined by number. I'm what your racism sounds like. Thunder. Booming against sky like fist to face, oppressed to race, my race. I know what your racism feels like, lava on skit, spit in face, nigga. Your racism sounds like nigga. You're from the lips of the 1%. Hey, yo, 1%. What's the amount of stocks you get from me and my brothers behind your iron bars epidemic? Your racism looks like epidemic. Drone zombie nation brainless feeding off the brains of the brainless soulless humanity can't be purchased Jimmy Crow crack corn crack whip raise fists deflect this unite racism is afraid of unity of you of me racism looks like cocaine on cover of time magazine feels like razor blades on eyelids sounds like war on drugs on black on people ever war on drugs ever war on black people ever war on drugs on black on people taste like pepper spray and bleach death Smells like burnt mocha flesh dripping from the bones of strange fruit. America's trying to go green without going black. Red, white, and blue nooses hang from flagpole, hang from oak tree, hang from ceiling. What else? Because these America colors do besides fucking hang. Our fingerprints rest in the soil of this nation. And I fight for justice, we never cease. I fight for black folks, we never cease. I fight for brown folks, we never cease. I fight for queer folks, we never cease. I fight for trans folks, we never cease. I fight for Palestine, we never cease. I fight for justice, we never cease. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. One more time. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord. And be free. I say. Yes. Oh shit! You know, poets, when you get up there, 
Whew. Okay. I love y'all so much. <laughs> but it ain't about me, it's about our young people. So give them a round of applause one more time. Yeah. If I can have every poet in round two join me up on this stage right now so we can announce our top scoring poets who represent the Bay Area the at Brave New Voices. Get them some love, get them some love, get them some love. Everybody, get them some stand love. Get them up some for love. these young poets. Get them some love. Stand up for these young poets. Stand up for these young poets. Before I even reveal to y'all who your Brave New Voices team is, Ooh. everybody put two hands up and give good energy this whole time, y'all. Two hands up for that energy. These poets were dropping bars like, I want to slaughter the systems you defend. A shout becomes a whisper when they over-censor us. Pry a bone of self-esteem out of your body. Love is like water. Banning books is a disease in our uh -huh. country. You ain't free till you denounce Talk the captors' beliefs. These kids are spitting bars. Make some noise for Make all of noise. them. Make some noise. All of them. Hey, yo, Gretch, before you announce our top six poets, I just wanted to give some space and opportunity for our amazing, our fearless, our phenomenal executive director, Mush Lee, would jump up on the mic real quick. Come talk to us, Mush. And she's a baddie. Like. So I really thought that I wasn't gonna be on the mic, so I was really chilling. I was like, oh good, they skipped over my part. Um, can we please give it up for every single young person that touched the stage? Every single. And if you are not on your feet and you're able, I want to invite you now to please rise. Please give all of your love, whatever energy you got left in your body for these poets. Take it in, y'all take it in. Y'all, I've been doing this a very long time. I know I only look 17, thank you so much. <laughs> but I've That's been around Korean the youth skincare. peaks for a long, long time. I was, I mean, I was that height still, I'm this height now, but I, I've been doing this since I was a shorty. So everybody that's in the audience tonight that's been with us, thank you. Um, there was a time when we weren't sure we were gonna come back, you know, like a lot of organizations uh, in the country. We're so grateful to even be here, y'all feel me? Yeah. Like we are grateful to be here. Let me say, I'm not gonna say a lot. First of all, thank you to everybody who gave. We, 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 we reached the goal. Here. I wanna remind or, or let you all know that there is no, and I don't know if y'all know this, but there is no poetry festival in the world that gathers poets and writers that are young. Yep. ever in the world. This summer in DC, You Speaks is the only organization that's curating and bringing folks from 22 cities across the country, 250 poets. Make some know. noise for that, make Give some noise. I hope to see all of you guys there. The last thing that I'm gonna say, if you don't know, I'll, I'll let y'all know our mission. We are about creating safe and brave spaces for young people to find, develop, publicly present, and apply their voices as agents of change. Paul, I still got it. Paul Flores, one of our founders, is in the house. I still got it. But this is the last thing I'll say. As, you know, as time changes, yeah, you know, we've been around 28 years, um, I just want to remind everybody this. If you ever come back to a You Speak show, please know the intention is not for you to be entertained. Mm. Yes? I'm going to say that one more time. At, this, at the risk of everybody here hating me, that's fine. Love them. You can hate me. The, the intention is not for us as adults and audience and listen, listeners to be entertained. The intention is to bear witness to young people when we are at home freaking out because the world is in shambles yes. and we're having panic attacks and trying to figure out what to do, they are the ones who are scribing right now what we need to be doing tomorrow. Y'all feel me? I just need to remind everybody of that. In case, in case y'all thought tonight was a poetry show, it's not. So one last time, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you to every teacher. Thank you to every mentor. Thank you to every parent, every yeah. sibling, every homie that's in the room. Thank you to the You Speaks old heads that used to be this young and now have white hair. <laughs> I see y'all. I won't point Damn. you out, but there's some of us. Um, and thank you to the judges, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't get to say this enough, Derry, but um, you know, 
like, can we, can I, can I, can, can this room please uh, put your hands together for the staff of this building? It is, it is, yes. You know, 28 years ago, it was like, how do we bring young people of color into dignifying spaces like this? And last but not least, if you are a You Speak staff person, can I please invite you, not to stand, because we all standing, but can, can you just wave to us? Everybody give it up for the phenomenal You Speak staff that makes this possible. Okay, every, I see it. Everybody's like, Mush, get off the microphone, man. Who gave Mush the microphone? I promise you I'm going to go off, but this is how much I love this. This is how much we love this. Love these these spaces are so, so sacred, y'all, yeah? In a moment when it's so easy to be in the living room, you know what I mean? And it's like not come out. This is what brings us together, art, culture, community. So give it up one more time. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. Mush. Thank you the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, thank you. Also, before we jump into our top six, we're gonna put a QR code up for a survey. Take the survey. Period. Take the survey. Period. Give us your responses. Rank us all fives and meet me outside. It's okay, okay, don't rank us all fives. But we need to hear your feedback. You help inform our events. You help us punch grantors in the head, and they be like, well, we all know if you wanna fund this. <laughs> but we got testimonials from each and every one of you in this space, okay? This so please, scan the so QR funny. code. Aww. The stock photo is sending me, but go off. Scan the QR code. <laughs> Give us the feedback so we can inform all of our future events and programs. Yeah, is that cool? Yeah. All right. I know y'all ready to hear the top six? Yeah. You ready to hear your brave new voices team, y'all? Yeah. Make some thunder with your feet. Make some thunder with your feet, y'all. Come on. Bring the thunder. Bring, Bring the, the thunder. 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 Bring the thunder. Your brave new voices team coming in sixth place. Make some noise for Joe. Make some noise. Step up, Joe, brave step, brave up, step up, Joe, step up, Joe, step up. On your brave new voices team, make some noise in fifth place is Leah. Yeah. yeah. On your BNV team, noise. go into DC in fourth place. Make some noise for Marvin. Marvin. Yeah. All right, all right. Place, in third place, going to BNV with us this summer, make some noise for Selma. Selma! And in second place, coming to Brave New Voices, repping the Bay, make some noise for Sochi. Sochi! And your top, your top scoring it. poet of the night, make all the noise for young Mallory. Mallory! This is your Brave This is our squad. Take a photo, take a photo. Can we get all the photo, can we get all the poets who came up on the stage, every poet that touched stage, please come up on the stage for a group photo. Make some noise, y'all. These are the youth that are representing the Bay. Every poet, Skelly, you too, yeah. Every poet that touched the stage. Different levels, some people in the front, some in the back. For a group photo, y'all. Y'all, period. We love to see it. And just so y'all know, if you haven't been to any of our writing workshops, any of our other open mics, please know that there are other opportunities for Youth Speaks. Make sure you follow us on Youth Speaks Instagram. If you missed any of the parts of this, we had it all live stream on YouTube, period. Send it to your homies, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, y'all, because the next generation speaks for itself. Period, y'all been amazing. Have a great night. Take that survey and we'll see y'all when we bring the crown back to the Bay from D.C.